What if I could create a roller coaster that would be hailed by enthusiasts as the best roller coaster in the world? Well, give it a few years and everyone will think it's the most overrated thing ever. <clears throat> Okay, so this is the second episode of my perfect coaster series, and today I'll be making everyone's favorite coaster model, the RMC Hybrid. So what makes a perfect roller coaster? It needs to be comfortable, the layout could be amazing, but if the track is rough, the ride has uncomfortable restraints, or both, then it's not as enjoyable. It needs to look cool, I mean this is pretty self-explanatory. It needs to have a good drop, usually my favorite element on any given ride is the drop, so it better be good. It needs a variety of good elements, it needs airtime moments, inversions, and it needs to keep the filler track to a minimum. The ride should have strong forces, but also a variety of forces achieved through a variety of elements like I mentioned before. Some airtime should be strong ejector, some can be floater, and also there should be some strong positive g-forces in some spots, but it can't be too intense. The ride needs to keep a constant pace throughout with minimal dead spots, keeping riders thrilled. Alongside that, the elements should be sequenced realistically. You shouldn't have a bunch of similar elements in a row, they need to spread them out throughout the ride. Duration, the ride should not be over in 15 seconds, it should last a pretty long while, but it shouldn't be too long shouldn't feel like there's wasted track. For this layout, I wanted to have the flow of Steel Vengeance, where there's a first half filled with large elements, followed by a second half of more rapid-fire airtime moments. But the large elements would also take inspiration from Iron Gwazi and Zadra, as well as some moments that are reminiscent of Hakuge and Untamed. I wanted to include as many standout elements as I could, with airtime moments such as Zadra's first turn, Steel Vengeance's outer banked airtime hill, Iron Gwazi's first wave turn, Storm Chaser's first camelback, and a large double-up of some sort. In the second half, I wanted to double down like Wicked Cyclones, as well as a bunch of small airtime moments, reminiscent of Steel Vengeance or Hakuge. For inversions, I had my eye on Zadra's stall under the lift hill, as well as Iron Gwazi's death roll. I also wanted to have a corner stall like Untamed, as well as some sort of barrel roll to end the ride. Let's get started with the ride's first drop. This will probably feel most similar to something like Zadra or Steel Vengeance, as the drop isn't as drawn out and therefore not as sustained as Iron Gwazi, but the airtime is a little stronger. The back row receives negative 1.1 Gs of ejector airtime as riders are yanked over the crest, and then are shoved back into their seats with 3.8 positive Gs, which is the strongest on the ride. The next element also takes inspiration from Zadra, as it is this strong bunny hill that turns a bit to the right. It pulls some strong airtime with at least negative 0.8 Gs for the whole train, as well as negative 1.2 lateral Gs. After this is an outer banked turnaround that takes inspiration from Iron Gwazi's first element, banking outward for a much longer period of time than Zadra's version of this element. All riders receive a sharp burst of laterals transitioning into the outer bank before back row riders are whipped over the crest, receiving negative 1.1 Gs of airtime and 0.9 lateral Gs on the transition exiting the element. This 0G stall has great hang time over the crest, but the entrance and exit deliver some extra thrills. Front row riders receive 1.2 lateral Gs entering the element, and back row riders get 0.9 lateral Gs as well as some ejector airtime while exiting the element. Some people found the death roll on Iron Gwazi to be one of the best inversions of all time, and some found it to be slightly underwhelming. I'm gonna make sure that nobody will find this death roll underwhelming. All riders will receive anywhere from 0.8 to 1.2 lateral Gs on both the entrance and the exit of the roll, but back row riders also get a sharp pop of ejector airtime before being yanked into the spiraling descent. The outer banked hill is not quite as sustained as the one in Steel Vengeance, but it definitely is stronger, pulling negative 0.9 Gs for front row riders and negative 1.2 for back row riders, making it the strongest airtime moment on the ride, but only by a slim margin. The ride hits its strongest g-force of 3.8 once again before heading into the next crazy maneuver. The train turns under the structure of the first element for an Iron Gwazi style wave turn, where the train is rapidly twisted 90 degrees to the side with front row riders experiencing negative 1 g's and back row riders with negative 1.1 g's. All riders will experience intense lateral force on both the entrance and the exit of the element. The most standard element on the ride is a classic camelback, but this still packs a punch. The element delivers negative negative 0.9 Gs for the front row and negative 1 Gs for the back, which is about on par with Zadra's camelback. Next up is a Steel Vengeance inspired double up, the first airtime pop delivering ejector airtime to the whole train, before the track shifts to the left, delivering 1 G of lateral force before the train hops into the mid-course brake run. After a quick break from the action, the train will turn to the left before dropping back down to ground level. Back row riders receive a strong dose of laterals and ejector airtime as they are being yanked down into the crazy second half of this coaster. The the first element after that drop is a double inverting stall, taking direct inspiration from Untamed. The entrance and the exit of this element both deliver laterals, the former having a more potent negative 1.1 lateral Gs for the front and the back of the train. 
The train then heads into a double down, which was initially inspired by the one on Wicked Cyclone, but the first airtime moment on the double down is far more sustained than on Wicked Cyclone. This part is more reminiscent of the Camelback earlier in the ride delivering similar forces, but the element ends about halfway down the descent, squeezing in a more powerful burst of airtime that brings the train back down to ground level. This element competes for the strongest airtime moment on the ride as back row riders receive negative 1.1 Gs on that second bump. The next element was a bit of a challenge as I needed to get the track from this element over the top of the track from the speed hill after the first drop. A small airtime moment would land right on top of the track we are trying to avoid, and a double up would be much too similar to the element that we just traversed. I decided on an overbanked inversion similar to the one featured on Untamed. Riders receive over 1G of laterals on both the entrance and the exit of this element, but are also treated to some strange hang time as the element isn't banked completely at 180 degrees, rather at 155 degrees which is still considered an inversion. The next element would seem to be just a boring filler element, but it actually delivers a very strong burst of lateral force for both front and back row riders. After this is an outer banked turn inspired by the one in the second half of Hakuge, delivering laterals as well as airtime that is more of the strong floater variety. After this is a long stretch of bunny hills that all deliver between negative 0.8 and negative 1 Gs. It isn't repetitive, however, as the first normal hill is followed by a turning hill that has some laterals, a trick track similar to the one found on Twisted Timbers, and one final bunny hill before the ride's final element. I wanted to have some sort of barrel roll like on Untamed, but I also needed to turn 90 degrees to return to the station. After fiddling around with the track shaping for a bit, I came to this insane turning barrel roll that ends the ride with a bang. Front row riders receive force that can only be described as negative 1.4 Gs of ejector hang time. The only thing I can really draw comparisons to is a more extreme version of how people describe the Mosasaurus roll on Velocicoaster. But that's not the only force that this element offers. Riders also receive an equally strong dosage of lateral force, also at negative 1.4 Gs as the track twists head over heels. It's still not done, the track still needs to bank a little more to the left which offers 1 G of laterals in the other direction before finally reaching the end of the ride. I'll pin the comment of whoever comes up with the best name for this element. Let's go through the categories. RMC track is always glass smooth, and I actually find the restraints to be quite comfortable. You guys voted on the color scheme, and you made a good choice. The blue track on white supports looks awesome. I consider a drop that pulls negative 1.1 Gs to be a pretty good drop. Every element on this ride is powerful, many of them are unique, and the only element that could be considered filler still delivers strong laterals. Every airtime moment delivers strong floater at the minimum, but most are very strong ejector. The ride hits 3.8 Gs, and that final element delivers insane hang time and lateral force. The pacing and sequencing take direct inspiration from many RMCs, and I think it flows very well. This thing has 80 seconds of prime ride time, which is a duration that nobody can complain about.
you enjoyed the video, make sure you're subscribed and check out a similar video I made for an Intamin Blitz.